Hello viewers! Today we're going to talk about one of the most controversial pieces of equipment fitted to most cars built in the last 10 or 15 years, the dreaded start-stop system. Although experts claim this technology reduces both fuel consumption and emissions, many drivers are irritated by it constantly shutting down the engine. And some even claim it actually shortens the lifespan of various vehicle components. So which of these opinions is correct? Well, that's what we're going to find out right now. Now, as you probably know, the start-stop system automatically shuts off the engine every time you come to a complete halt and shift the transmission into park. Or, if you drive a manual, when you shift into neutral and release the clutch. And then, as soon as you shift into drive or press the clutch again, it restarts the engine. So it's pretty much automated process that does everything by itself with no input from the driver whatsoever. Still, in most cars, you can opt to shut off the start-stop system by simply pressing the button on the dashboard or if the car maker decided to make things a bit more complicated, navigating through several menus in the vehicle's infotainment system. This, however, only disables it temporarily and you'll have to repeat the procedure every time you turn on the car. But what's the purpose of the whole start-stop thing? Well, by shutting off the engine while stationary, you actually save fuel. That's obvious, right? This is especially noticeable when driving in a city or traffic jams, when you spend a lot of time idling in one spot, waiting for other vehicles in front of you to start moving. By some calculations, the start-stop system can help improve gas mileage by as much as 10%, and that does sound tempting, assuming it's true. Also, what comes hand in hand with reduced fuel consumption is lower emissions. When the car is not running, it won't pollute at all. This is actually the main reason why the car makers have been fitting the start-stop system to most of their vehicles in the past decade or so. It helps them achieve strict emission goals set by the government and their environmental protection agencies. Lastly, it can also be said that less idling can even be beneficial for the engine and its longevity. Basically, if it shuts off when not needed, its internal moving parts will wear out less. It does make sense, in theory at least. On the other hand, critics say the start-stop system is actually bad for the engine and it may reduce its lifespan. One of the main arguments here is that the engine wear is at its highest in the first few seconds, so if you constantly shut it off and restart it afterward, that's anything but ideal. This claim, however, doesn't hold water because the start-stop system is inactive until the car reaches its running temperature. Or, in other words, it won't automatically shut off the engine at a standstill until it has fully warmed up. And these warm starts are nowhere near as harmful as so-called cold starts. This is something we already talked about in one of our previous videos. So there isn't much to worry about here. Still, this constant shutting off and restarting the car could very easily take its toll on its starting system. It's simple. Instead of cranking the engine just once, this could be done 10 or 20 times during your daily commute. And that puts additional stress on both the starter, who does the cranking, and the battery, which provides the electricity needed for this. Sure enough, the car makers have taken this into account. Vehicles with the start-stop system are usually fitted with upgraded starters and more powerful AGM batteries, which are designed to cope with these challenges. But there is no doubt that if something works harder and more frequently, it's more likely to fail over time. Another thing I must mention here, which is often overlooked, is the timing chain for those cars that have it instead of rubber timing belt. Now, as I explained in one of previous videos here, the timing chains have become sort of a weak spot in many engines, especially in European vehicles, 
because they stretch out with time and cause all sorts of problems. And one situation where the chain is under the most load is during startup. The thing is, while cranking, the engine rotates at just 3 or 400 rpm, but when it fires up, this goes up to 1000 rpm in a split second. This sudden change of speed puts quite a strain on the timing chain, and if you drive a car that's prone to problems with it, keeping the start-stop system on might only worsen it. In addition, when the start-stop system shuts off the car, the AC's performance goes down as well. That's because the AC compressor isn't running, as the engine is not powering it. Although the AC systems in these vehicles are built to make the most out of it to keep the interior cooled down when the start-stop system kicks in, during summer it's going to get hot very fast. So with all that in mind, what's the verdict on the start-stop system? Well, I'll share my personal opinion on this, starting with the fuel savings. Yes, sure, with the engine off while sitting stationary, you'll definitely save some gas. But how much? See, the fact is, modern cars use very little fuel while idling. Usually, this is less than a quarter of a gallon per hour. Per hour. So, if your engine shuts off while waiting at the traffic lights for 30 seconds, you save, well, maybe this much. Sure, over time, this will add up to some considerable savings measured in many gallons, but it will be all erased, at best, if your battery or starter gives up prematurely because of frequent engine starts. Not to mention the timing chain, if your car has it and it's prone to stretching issues. Also, the battery. Because of the start-stop system, you need a bigger AGM unit, which is far more expensive than it would be if the car hadn't had this system. Moreover, when you consider the energy and materials needed to manufacture uprated starters and batteries, this carbon footprint is something you'll probably never countermand with fuel savings, regardless of how high they might be. And while this might be my personal opinion, it actually doesn't differ much from what the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, the ones who advocated the start-stop system in the first place. What they are saying recently is that, effectively, this technology doesn't have as much impact on the fuel economy and emissions as they had hoped, and considering not forcing the car makers to use them in their vehicles anymore. At this point, you're probably wondering whether it's possible to permanently disable the start-stop system as if it doesn't exist at all. Well, the short answer is yes, in most cases, this is doable. But it's not easy, as you have to hack into the car CCU and tell it not to use this feature anymore. And for this, you need dealer-level diagnostic equipment capable of accessing these features. To be honest, most authorized dealers won't do this for you if you ask them, because this, in essence, is messing up with the EPA ratings, and they don't want that on their hands. The only way is to either find an experienced indie service, or buy an expensive dealer-level diagnostic tool and shut down the start-stop system yourself. So there you have it, viewers. That would be all about the start-stop system its upsides and shortcomings. I hope this video was helpful and if so, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends. On the other hand, if you're having some different issues with your car, be sure to check other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com for detailed automotive repair guides. Bye!